Halaka Media, the signature of quality and expression. Quality and expression. Pioneering production. Thrilling Dolby Pro Logic surround sound. Innovative. Captivating. Compelling audio range. Open your mind. Open your mind. Open your mind. Visit www.halaka.com for more information. Signature of quality and expression. Quality and expression. Contents of this audio may be disturbing or unsuitable for some listeners. Listener's discretion is strongly advised. Well, the future of man, when man makes man in a soup of chemicals and false intentions, designed for a fashionable world to the drum of a godless generation. The world is gripped in deadlock, as for the first time in the history of humanity. Mankind has the ability to custom design another life. Today, we are on the frontiers of a change. A change which will affect everything to come. We stand looking into our own humanity, asking the daunting question, what is it to be human? Genetics makes global headlines almost every day and leaves the general public in a semi-confused state. What to make of it? How will it affect me today and tomorrow? However, like so many things in life, the answers are not as black and white as we would like to believe. The gene is the biological code of life, the final frontier in human exploration. Man has invented structures to traverse the ocean depths. He has created machines to probe the confines of space. But nothing before can exceed the new discovery in our midst today. Genetics is the science where man goes beyond and redefines the code that God has placed in all life. What does our future hold in this world where man plays God and purges the boundaries of nature? The next 10 years looks capricious as the question of genetic engineering is put as an option before humanity. But are we ready for what comes as a result of this revolutionary science? DNA contains the information for the construction of every part of an organism. Genes are termed the unit of inheritance and are made up of strands of DNA. In humans, there are 46 chromosomes which house along their length DNA molecules. Almost every living cell thus has the complete information to build a complete human being. However, each cell only uses a piece of the information in order to build itself. The rest is redundant. The Austrian monk by the name of Gregor Mendel, around 1863, coined the word gene when he stumbled on an interesting discovery, which was to change man's understanding of the biological world. 
Mendel discovered the mechanism between what farmers had known for thousands of years. By breeding animals with certain traits, say sheep, with black fur, it was possible to control to some degree the predominance of black fur in the next generation. Mendel identified that a sex-related component came from both parents. But what interested Mendel was the fact that in some circumstances, breeding two animals with black fur could sometimes produce an animal with white fur. Mendel thus concluded that the mechanism which produces both physical features is sometimes present in an animal, although it does not physically display both. One feature expressing itself as dominant and the other feature as recessive. When mating occurred, the genes are swapped and in some circumstances, if both parents had the recessive gene for white and the dominant gene being black, it was possible for the two recessive genes to create a pure breed white sheep. This observation is not always the case for every physical feature. Some genes Mendel noticed, for example, that coded for height had graduations in some organisms. Some may be tall, medium or short. The source from which genes for an individual emerges is called the gene pool. When parents of different origins have offspring, new gene variety are added to the pool and the dominant gene appears in the physical characteristics of the offspring. However, the closer the two individuals, as in the case of siblings, cousins, etc., the more likely for them to share a similar gene pool. The resulting offspring are more likely to inherit two copies of a recessive gene. Evidence of genetic disease are commonly found with communities where inbreeding is practiced. The disease commonly known as Tay-Sachs is most prominent within some Jewish communities where relatives intermarry. Genetic diseases are easily transmitted and the chance of deformity is severely increased. Genes are not only responsible for our physical traits. Genes are said to control intelligence, creativity, aggression, and many other social traits. So is it nature or nurture? What sculpts our personalities? What features of human behavior arise from the genes that we all share? Obsession with this question led the 12th century Roman emperor, Frederick II, who was curious to see whether children reared in isolation would end up speaking Hebrew or whether the Almighty might have graced them with some other language. Freud believed that man had an innate death wish of some kind that was normally channeled away from the self towards external targets. There is a research program going on where identical twins separated at birth are studied. Identical twins separated at birth do share many mannerisms, hobbies and taste. The big question is which characteristics are genetic and which are environmental. A child raised in a city ghetto may choose a life of crime, while the same child, raised in a wealthy Beverly Hills household, may pursue a career in medicine. A child with musical parents may have inherited musical genes, or it may be the musical environment. The same can be said for academic prowess. There can be no doubt that the environment plays a significant role in the mental and psychological development of a child. But also, a great deal of our traits are genetic, or at least a combination of genetic and environmental pressures. Cloning is an asexual process where an organism is artificially replicated. This is one of the most common associations with genetic engineering. After Dolly the Sheep was introduced to the world on February of 1997, cloning rose from scientific obscurity and B-rate films to global headline news. However, the question of cloning has been going on since 1961, when Dr. John Gurdon in Oxford successfully cloned a frog using a process called nuclear separation. Since genes control quite a lot of features such as strength and height, a cloned animal will be identical to the parent. All that is needed is a fertilized embryo and a few surrogate mothers to receive the cloned individuals. This process is called artificial twinning and differs from the technique used by Dr. John Gordon. It is the only technique that works on mammals. 
that includes humans. In 1985, scientists had already claimed that they had cloned a human in their laboratory. The current legal standpoint on cloning is still in limbo. The United States and Europe in particular are reviewing hundreds if not thousands of genetic related issues, all pointing to one factor, what to do about human cloning. In many other countries around the world, there are no regulations whatsoever. The US government is openly against human cloning. After the news about Dolly reached the White House, President Clinton immediately issued a five-year ban on using federal funds to conduct research on human embryos. Bill S.1601 is the Republican bill to outlaw human cloning. In February of 98, it failed to get the mandatory 60 votes needed to pass it. Bill S.1601 stipulated a 10-year prison sentence for anyone creating a human embryo using somatic nuclear transfer or twinning. Under current laws, research embryos cannot surpass development beyond 14 days. After that amount of time has passed, the embryos must be destroyed. There is no body to police this ridiculous law, and it stands to reason that a completely new genetically modified generation may be already in our midst. Even if a motion such as Bill S.1601 is passed, human embryo research will still be done. The Kennedy-Feinstein bill, named for the two politicians who proposed it, bans human cloning for at least 10 years. As with the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act of 1990, the bill allows scientists to use human cloning in limited experiments if they destroy the embryo in the early stage of development. The bill suggests that any experiment going outside the given parameters will be met with a million dollar fine. The government will also confiscate any lab equipment used in this experiment. This bill raises questions like, just how is the government going to supervise every single lab to see which experiments go too far? The FDA has volunteered to regulate human cloning, although it scarcely falls under the jurisdiction of the Food and Drug Administration. While these laws are coming into play, scientists like Richard Seed, who proposed to clone his wife, are still determined to clone entire individuals, and so they are finding loopholes in the proposed bills. Seven state laws specifically say it is illegal to create exact genetic duplicates of people. Yet when using somatic nuclear transfer, the DNA is not 100% exact copy. The nucleus of a cell contains more than 99% of a person's DNA, and the mitochondria which produces the cell's energy contains less than 1%. Lawyers can argue in court that the individual created from this process would not be an exact genetic copy of the genetic donor. Technically, this procedure would be within the law. The government's attempt to ban human cloning are futile, and it is only a matter of time before cloning becomes not only legal, but socially acceptable. The current US opinion polls show a 76% anti-human cloning sentiment. That may be high, but not as compared to results from 10 years ago. The current laws are easy to circumvent, and if by some chance a very specific law is passed in the US or Europe that prohibits any type of human cloning, dedicated scientists can simply move to another country where such laws are non-existent. But what is all the fuss about? Why clone a human? What could be the possible advantage to such an ungodly act? The methodology of peaceful times differs greatly to that of war times. Morality sways when the primary objective is victory. Cloning can offer to a war the possibility of a whole unit of soldiers resembling John Rambo or a nuclear research unit with 20 Einsteins. However, clones do occur naturally. At least 4,000 natural clones are born each day. Identical twins are clones of each other, genetically identical. However, their characteristics are not artificially selected for alternative gain. Another use for cloning is for organ replacement. By controlling an embryo, it can be programmed under strict laboratory conditions to grow into a desired organ. Unknown to many, a similar process is already in use where tissue from aborted fetuses is collected for use in patients. 
Someone once said, ethics is what you believe in this year. Are you...